And I say to the grown-ups, if you want to deny evolution and live in your, in your uh, world that's completely inconsistent with everything we observe in the universe, that's fine. But don't make your kids do it, because we need them. We need scientifically literate voters and taxpayers for the future. That was Bill Nye. He is the CEO of the Planetary Society and a well-known educator in the field of science. The topic Mr. Nye was addressing in that video is the damage that religious ideals can do to the future of science and technology in the United States. He and many other religious skeptics see this problem as a major one. This, however, is just one of a multitude of problems caused by religion in the world today. Religion can cause violence, hatred, injustice, and widespread division between people and nations. People often tell me that religion is good. Religions teach good moral behavior. Religions bring people together. Religions provide comfort and a sense of belonging. Religions help their community. These are all facts, but we must look closely at the advantages and disadvantages of religion and ask ourselves, does religion do more good or more harm? It is believed that religion came about to bridge the gap between a human's ability to ask why and the ability to find out why. Soon after early Homo sapiens developed language, they began to question the world around them. Why does it rain? Why does the sun set and rise? Why are we here? But science, the process we now use to answer life's why questions, was far from coming into existence. So people created their own explanations rather than admitting to a lack of understanding about the world, an idea that is scary and discomforting to many people, theories about a god or gods arose. We now have science, which has answered many of these questions and is working toward answering all of them. Yet, religion still exists. In the year 2010, over 84% of the world population identified with a religious group, with 31.5% identifying as Christian, and 23.2% identifying as Muslim. As we see by the data in these charts, countries with the highest percentage of religious people have, by far, the highest rates of violence. This is not just true for Islam, a religion that is commonly in the news for violent extremists, but Christianity as well. On the other hand, the countries with the highest percentage of atheists have the lowest levels of violence. Islam, the second largest religion in the world, is perhaps the most problematic. Many people are aware of the fact that Islam can lead to violence, but few understand why. The media would have you believe that only extreme, fundamentalist Muslims are violent and aggressive toward other groups. What you may not know is that the Quran encourages violence toward non-believers. Whoever fights in the cause of God then gets killed or attains victory, we will surely grant him a great recompense. Quran 474. Teachings like these are the reason for violence in the name of Islam as seen in tragedies such as the September 11th attacks and the 2015 Paris terror attacks. While Christianity may not cause the level of violence and fear that Islam does, it causes a slew of different problems. In the states of Texas, Louisiana, and Tennessee, public schools are allowed to teach creationism as scientific fact and explanation for life on Earth. In my hometown of Hingham, Massachusetts, I was able to find a religious elementary school, St. Paul's School, less than a half mile from my house. No matter your stance on the theory of evolution, you can see how it is dangerous to teach children creationism as opposed to evolution. Less than 1% of scientists are religious. Teaching religion in the science classroom would cause great confusion to any student who wishes to pursue science as a field of study in college or as a career later in life. Not only does religion cause problems today, it has caused problems for hundreds of years. Many events that are viewed as the worst tragedies in human history were directly or indirectly caused by religion. The Holocaust, 
time when Adolf Hitler imprisoned and killed millions of German and other Western European Jews, was caused by religion. Hitler was Catholic, and for some reason he viewed the Jewish population as subhuman and disgraceful. This would never have happened if Catholicism and Judaism were not prominent religions in Germany. The Armenian Genocide, a time when the dictator of Armenia forced everyone to convert to Islam, and tortured then killed those who refused. Manifest Destiny, a time when Europeans began colonizing the lands of indigenous peoples. They gained control of these foreign lands because they believed that it was their God-given right and responsibility to modernize the people. These colonialists brought disease that wreaked havoc on the immune systems of the indigenous and began enslaving those strong enough to work. You may be wondering what feasible solutions we as a society have. In short, there is no easy, one-step solution. While no easy answer to this problem exists, steps can and should be taken to address the problem. First, promoting widespread secular education would create a scientifically literate youth and would eliminate the harm done by religious ideals in the classroom. Second, discontinuing economic support of countries that are run by religious governments, specifically Islamic regimes, could help to minimize their power in the world. But, the only thing that could realistically solve all the problems that religion perpetrates is a worldwide movement away from fundamental religious ideologies. In recent American history, racist thought and action was widely accepted. Today, if you are a racist, you are vastly in the minority and you are looked down upon by the community. Yet, we did not make racist thought illegal, as this would violate freedom of speech. We simply took on a social movement to end its prevalence and thus end its harmful effects. The same can be done with religion. In doing so, we can preserve all the positive aspects of religion, such as fostering a sense of community and giving to charities but in a way that is separate from the harmful aspects of the institution.